Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Davis um, from Touchstone. Um, we've invited uh, JKX to come on stage today and present to you a case study of their uh, AFE approval process. It's based on the Sun Systems workflow application and uh, we've been engaged with them for the last few months in delivering this project, uh, assisted ably by David Mayer from Professional Advantages as Professional Services Manager and uh, Stefan Rice who's been involved from the customer end. So what I'd like to do just now is invite David onto the stage and ask him if he can uh, take us through the process of how we've actually delivered this and implemented this process. So David. Thanks Peter. Good afternoon everybody. Um, so yes, we, we are from, I'm from Professional Advantage um, and we worked with JKX and with Touchstone to deliver um, Energy Pro to them um, for their AFE solution. I just wanted to briefly talk to you before I hand over to Stefan um, about business process management and how this fits into your organisation. You'll have heard a lot of things discussed today um, and a lot of terminology bandied around. Um, around workflow, business process management, um, and really it's important to understand how this all fits together. So basically, is this your business? So we work with a lot of organizations where we go in, there's a significant number of manual processes in place, um, undocumented uh, processes, uh, things being handled through emails or manual forms, um, and what that represents is a lot of confusion um, and a lot of time taken to deliver um, what the business needs. So what we come, would do is we come in and we look at the processes, the key processes for the businesses, um, and we introduce XM Pro or Energy Pro, which is just a, a labeling of the core XM Pro platform, um, and we introduce that into the middle, and it handles the business process management. So what is XM Pro and Energy Pro and how do they fit together? So XM Pro is a technology platform um, which delivers business process management and workflow solutions to any sector. And what we've done and Touchstone have done is they've white labeled and branded the XM Pro platform as Energy Pro, but the fundamental technology that sits underneath it is XM Pro. Um, so what type of processes, we talk about processes, what type of processes can we deliver using this platform? So some of the things that we've done previously are around time writing, exp employee expense management, supplier onboarding, so that's dealing with all of the um, taking in supplier information, getting it posted into Sun Systems, um, similarly GL and analysis code creation in Sun, um, obviously the authorization for expenditure process that Stefan's going to walk you through, um, and bank account details update. So what are, what are the key benefits of Energy Pro for your organization? So w as with any business process management, the Energy Pro tool ensures that the right person performs the right task at the right time with the right information. So the core fundamental process is that it's repeatable. It's consistent and it's repeatable. So you give this to any new employee in your organization, they follow the steps within the tool and they will have the same outcome each time. What does that mean for you? Well, it centralizes management and deployment of automated processes, which obviously increases productivity. So you're eliminating those manual steps that we saw on the earlier slide. It reduces process-related costs and results in tangible cost savings. So obviously things are getting done quicker. If you have an approvals process, instead of it taking two or three days for it to go around the organization in a manual way, that can be happening in, in a matter of minutes. It offers control, consistency and transparency and it's obviously very important as the increase for audit and governance um, covers us all. It enhances the user experience, delivering consistent, easy to use process applications. So as I said, a new user can join your organization. As you'll see when Stefan demonstrates, even with a complicated process like AFE, the tool is very intuitive and really helps the user understand. So it's very light from a training perspective. 
and business process owners can actively measure, report and improve process outcomes. And that's the key to business process management over and above workflow. Workflow is just one element of business process management. It's in, about improving the organisation and providing consistent, pro consistent process improvement. It also provides seamless integration with many systems and we have pre-existing connectivity into um, Sun Systems. So we are one of the strategic partners with Infor um, and we can post directly into the Sun System tables. And finally, it provides a variety of delivery methods including web, mobile and MS Outlook. So you can have processes that need authorization. If users are out on the road, they can just um, log in on their BlackBerry or their iPhone and they can approve processes irrespective of where they are. And I'll, <clears throat> that's all from me. So what I'll do is I'll hand you over to Stefan and he'll talk you through JKX and the AFE process. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name's Stefan Rice, and I'm the System Accountant at JKX Oil & Gas PLC. We're a FTSE 250 company listed on the London Stock Exchange with our head offices based here in London. We are an oil and gas exploration, development and production company, um, holding license interest predominantly in countries surrounding the Black Sea. Our main sites are in the Ukraine and Russia, but we do hold additional license interests in Hungary, Bulgaria and Slovakia. We're currently producing in excess of 11,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day and we're producing in Ukraine and Hungary and due to start production in Russia in the autumn. We have 600 employees in, approximately 600 employees in the Ukraine, approximately 150 employees in Russia and about 30 here in London. Over the last four years, our annual capex expenditure has ranged between 100 and 200 million dollars. A lot of that has been spent in Russia. We've been using Sun Systems now for the past three years. This was implemented with the aid of Touchstone at the beginning of 2008. At the same time we implemented um, Sun, we also implemented a lot of additional enhancement modules, including PM10, which we use for our budgeting, forecasting and reporting. We also implemented PA Cash Desk, Advanced Inquiry, Proactis, and most recently Energy Pro, which we went live with earlier this year. So why Energy Pro? We had a manual paper-based process for raising and approving requests for expenditure on capital items. This is what we term the authorization for expenditure process, or as is commonly known in the oil and gas sector, the AFE process. We had a number of issues with this process, and considering the amount of money that we spent, we had to address those issues. So I'll go through the issues that we were, we were facing, and these are common with all manual processes. There was no single audit trail, there were multiple templates across the countries. It was difficult to ensure that it was difficult to ensure request originators were using the standard most up-to-date templates. As a result, multiple templates were being used and submitted, and this resulted in inconsistent and sometimes incomplete information being received. There was no integration with our financial systems. The AFE code is a ledger analysis code in Sun and the cost information we post into the budget ledgers within Sun. This was a manual exercise performed by the system administrator, effectively rekeying the information that the originators had already entered into the, into the paper-based forms. And sometimes the paper-based forms weren't received by the system administrator, so there was a delay in entering the information into our financial systems. And with any rekeying of data, there's always a scope for error. It increases the scope for error. The biggest frustration for our users was the length of approval time. It was often difficult to track down the approvers who were often travelling between the various different sites. So trying to pin them down and get the paperwork in front of them to sign and approve proved uh, a lengthy process. There was also a lack of transparency for our uh, originators. They never knew or it was difficult to, to locate where their request was in the process to enable them to, to, to badger that person to get the approval done and um, 
to speed the process along. With all manual processes as well, there was no easy reporting method. And one of the, one, and the last, but certainly one of the most important, it was difficult to ensure compliance with our policies and procedures. So we wanted a system that would address these issues in a structured format and that was easy to use. And we approached Touchstone, who suggested Energy Pro as that solution, with the added benefit, as David mentioned earlier, that it is not limited purely to the AFE process. So I'll now quickly run you through uh, the process to give you a demonstration of the application itself so you can see it in action. So it's a, it's a web-based application um, which we've deployed on an HTTPS secure site. This means, like today, it can be accessed outside of our network. So it was easy for us to deploy to the various different countries. So I'll now log in as the user. Okay, so the three main menus I'm going to take you through today are tasks, process, and report. To initiate a request, we would go into the process tab. Now, at the moment, there is only one process that we've implemented, but as I mentioned earlier, we are looking to expand on this. So to raise a new request, I'll go into AFE request, new AFE request. Now we have, a number, we have a few different types of AFE, but for the purpose of today, I'm simply going to raise an original request. So there's a number of fields that have popped up that we are now due to enter. There's different ways that you can populate these fields. There's either drop-down lists, uh, a date selection from a calendar, or simply free text. Now the logic here is to complete the fields in sequential order so you work across and down the page. Now the reason for that is because some of the values in the drop down list are dependent on what has been selected in the earlier fields. So I'll start raising the request. So the first thing to do is enter a request title. I then select an AFE holder. Now this is a drop down list of values and it's retrieving these values from within Energy Pro, but it's not limited to pulling the values from Energy Pro. We have additional fields down here which is retrieving that information from Sun Systems. Company, joint venture and field location are all ledger analysis codes within the Sun application. And it's a dynamic integration. So if a new value, if a new analysis code is entered into Sun, it will immediately appear, appear within Energy Pro for the user to select. Now, as mentioned earlier, the list of values that the user has to select from is dependent on what's been selected in a previous field. So I'll just give you a brief demonstration of that. If I was to select the company BKN, I have a, a choice of joint ventures ranging from these different ledger analysis codes that have uh, come from Sun. For purposes of today, I'm going to raise a simple request for JKX services, and you'll see the list of values has now changed. So I enter a joint venture, and I enter a field. Again, these are ledger analysis codes from Sun. I'll then select the date the approvals required, which I'll select from a calendar. For the purposes of today, I'm going to select tomorrow and the date the project commences. I'll now enter an expenditure category. And again, if I select expiration, for example, I have a choice of these different activities. But for today, I'm going to choose fixed assets, non-oil and gas and the activity listing has changed. And again, this is all maintained by us through an admin screen within XM Pro. I'll select a department. These are again ledger analysis codes from Sun Systems. And now I come down to the budget section. I have a choice of, I have three, three choices. If I was to select no, I would simply continue on with the request. I'm gonna select yes. So additional fields have popped up where I populate the year and the budget number and the budget amount. If I was to select substitution, an additional field pops up 
which is the justification for that substitution. I'll just point out that with these fields, some of them are mandatory, and it's the asterisk against the field that denotes whether they're mandatory or not. So I'll select yes, I'll select a budget year, and then I'll select a budget number, a budget code. There's only one. And it's defaulted in the budget amount, and this is a non-editable field. Oh, bear with me. So I'm going to enter again the department. I'll select budgeted yes. I'll select the year. I'll select the budget code. And I'll now enter a justification for the purchase, which is free tax. Now you'll notice a red warning flag has come up informing us that under our policies and procedures, the approval date should be more than 20 days from the submission date, today's date. Please either amend the approval date or set compliance check below to know. If the user tries to, to, to bypass this, what you'll notice is there's a control in place to prevent them from, from doing this. It's telling them that they either need to select that it's non-compliant with policies and procedures or to change some dates accordingly. So I'll just simply select no, urgent request. And because all this information is now held in a central place, this gives us the ability to report on that information if we, if we require. There is a link here to the policies and procedures which are then stored on the AFE server, on the workflow server, so that is, as and when we update those policies and procedures, we can simply save it back onto the server so that the users are always seeing the most up-to-date and recent policies and procedures. I'll now move on to the next stage of the process, which is to enter the cost information. Okay, so we still enter the cost information in Excel, but what Energy Pro gives us is the assurance that users will always be using the most up-to-date and recent costing template within Excel because there's a control in place that the only template that they can reattach to the request is the one that they've originally downloaded. So you'll notice here as well that a request ID has now been generated. So I now download the Excel template Okay, so what you'll notice here is there's certain cells that have been pre-filled. These have been pre-filled with information that we've already entered into Energy Pro. So we've got our request title and it's given us the ID. We've got an expenditure category, an activity category. We've also got this date here, which was the project start date that we entered. And this is for us to phase the cost over a 24 month period. It's also brought in exchange rates to convert to US dollars, which is our reporting currency, as we can enter any transactional currency against any of the cost lines, and it will automatically convert that into US dollars. So I'll now enter some cost information. This is now just using standard um, Excel functionality in that we've protected the worksheet, and the only cells that they can enter into are the ones highlighted in green, which hopefully you can see. 
So I'll enter some cost information. I'm just going to enter simply GBP units one, five thousand pounds. And what you'll notice is it's converted that into US dollars at an exchange rate that's been defaulted into the spreadsheet from Energy Pro. I'll now save the request. And you can give it any name that you, that you wish and save it anywhere on your network. I'll now return back to Energy Pro and I'll reattach the cost breakdown template. And I'll move on to the next stage of the process. Okay, so this is an initial review screen and all this information here is what's been entered in the, in, the, in the screen that you saw earlier. It's also brought in the cost information from the Excel template here. We, sh we display it in thousands. If we click on these two sections down here, it basically gives you a summary of what's been entered in Excel. So as, a, as an originator, this gives you a chance to review that you're happy with all the information that, you, that you've entered. If you find anything's wrong that needs changing, for example, the cost inf you've, you've entered the incorrect cost, it's simple and a quick process to go back into the template, and I'll show you now because it is very quick. I'll just update the costs. I'll add an additional row in for $3,000. I'll change the phase in, save the request, and then I'll come down here to re-upload the cost breakdown template, and I can reattach the same cost template because it's already established a link between the original one that was downloaded and this one I'm about to upload. So as you can see, the new net AFE total has now increased to $11,000 from $8,000. And if we expand this section here, we'll see the additional row has come in. So once you're happy with everything here, you move on to the next stage, which is the final review and submit stage. Now within this screen, you pretty much see what you saw on the last screen. So all the information that you previously entered, the cost information, but what it does give you is a more detailed financing section down here. So this is a high level summary of what's been entered into the Excel template here and here. And then this section here is a financing history section where you can see all the requests that have been raised against the specific budget code. And it gives you a cumulative total so you can see where you are in relation to the budget. And at this stage now, the originator, if he requires, can add additional supporting documentation. To add an attachment, they'll simply click on this link here to add, attach, or remove a file. Click to add a file, type of file, any one of these, we'll select economics. We'll select a file, and this again is anywhere on your, can be a file from anywhere on your network. Add or remove, submit. And if I refresh this screen now, what you'll see is the economics has been attached and it was attached by the, the person, Nick Arcas, on this day. If he's attached the wrong file, he can simply go in and unattach that, delete that file in the same way that he attached the file. So once he's happy with everything, he can then submit for approval. So this has gone to Sue River for approval. We've got an approval matrix that's dependent on various different categories such as company, expenditure category, uh, whether it's budgeted or not, and the values. This approval matrix is maintained by us within XM Pro. We have the ability to add new approvers, change the, or add new layers into the approval matrix, change the approvers, change the threshold values. It's all maintained by us. The, approval, the, the request can go to either an individual or it can go to a group. 
where one person within that group assigns the task themselves and can, act and can approve, authorise the request. An email notification will be sent to the approver on submission of the request and reminder emails can be set up to be sent out at regular intervals and you can determine what interval you wish that to be sent out at. You can also set backup um, uh, employees against the approver. So after a period of time, it automatic, if they have an action to task, it will automatically forward on to, the next, to, to their backup employee. As a system administrator, we also have the functionality to forward that on to um, another, to their backup employee if they haven't set themselves as being unavailable when they go away on holiday. One final thing which we've recently implemented is a, is a tr or built is a tracking report. And I'll just quickly show you that. So here, this is the request we've just raised, 1249. And what this report is telling us is who it's currently sat with. So, so the user can see exactly where his request is within the process, and in order to push it along, can chase up that relevant person. If this was a group, it would give the group name here, and you have the option to tick on this button, to exp and, and the section below will display who the members are within that group. So you can chase someone within that group. So there's various different means within XM Pro to help keep this request ticking along and therefore hopefully improve or speed up our approval times. So as, a, as an approver, after receiving the email, there is a link within the email so that they can access XM Pro. They'll log into the application And they'll go to tasks. And this will list all the tasks that they have to action. So here is the request that's just been submitted, the purchase of equipment. And this takes them to a screen similar to the review and submit screen that the originator saw. It gives them all the information that they need in order to approve this request. Who it was raised, who the AFE holder is, the company it's for, uh, the budget code, the budgeted amount. You've also got the financing section down here so they can see on raising this request it's taken the cumulative total up to this value against the budgeted value of, of that. Also within this screen they can see the attachments that have been added and they can open that file if they wish to see and it also gives you the approval history. It will show the full approval history. In this example, Sue River is the only approver, but if there were additional approvers after her, it would show where it is to go next in, 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 the, in the chain. And, and the good thing about this is if, if the approver rejects the request and then it gets resubmitted, that approval history is retained. So you will see the fact that where it got to, why it got rejected, and that it is in fact a resubmission. There's also a link to the Excel costing template if they want to see a more detailed breakdown. So the, the approver now has the choice to either approve or decline the request. If they decline the request, they have to provide a comment as to why, and on submission, this will send a, an email notification back to the originator with the reason why it was declined for them to then action. But for now, I'm simply going to approve the request. And as Sue is the last approver, this then goes to the system administrator to push the button to integrate this information into Sun Financials. So I'll just log in as the system administrator. And again, they'll go into tasks. And here is AFE request approved. Now I'm having to assign this task to myself. I'm a member of a group, so the first thing I need to do is assign and take ownership of the task. It's automatically generated an AFE number, so this has gone out to the sun tables, identified the last AFE number, and then given it the next sequential number. We spoke earlier about the fact one of the problems with uh, a manual process is there's no single audit trail. What we've now got is the full audit history 
which we can expand here and we can see all the steps that this process has gone through. And if we, if we, if we want to, we can click on one of these and have a look at what, what, what happened within that process, within that step of the process. So I'll simply click to submit. And on submission of that, that will then feed the information into Sun Financial. So it will create the ledger analysis AFE code. It will pass the cost information into the budget ledger. And it will also send an email notification out to the originator and, and other people that you can define to tell them that the AFE has now been approved and what the AFE code is. We also add that AFE to some Sun um, data presets that, that we've got set up. So that, in a nutshell, is the product itself. Um, you know, we find it um, a very, well, we found it to be a very intuitive application and very easy to use. We adopted a train-the-trainer approach, and the training that we've given to our users is, is, is very brief, and in some instances, particularly with the approvers, no training was given at all. They simply received the email, lo logged into the application, and then were able to just run away and approve the request. To date, we've raised about 50 to 60 um, AFE requests, and we've received positive feedback from the users, particularly around the uh, length of approval time. And from a finance perspective, with all the data now stored in one central database, it provides easily accessible data for us to now report on. Thank you. OK, thank you, Stefan. Thank you, David, for your presentations. I think you'll find that uh, uh, XM Pro Energy Pro is a solution that fits around Sun Systems. It's a current and up-to-date modern solution. It uh, integrates fully into the financial ledgers. It integrates into other business applications that you also pay, may have within the business. And uh, I think you'll find that as as this becomes the the standard and gains more traction, that XM Pro you'll see us doing a lot more work around this uh, this particular solution and particularly delivering it around Sun Systems. So I tell you, thank you very much for your time. Hope you've enjoyed the the, the afternoon and I wish you all the very best. Thank you.